As we take a look at eukaryotic cells, there's, there's one overriding theme you gotta remember. And that theme is this, compartments. Compartmentalization. I'm only gonna say that once because that's a really hard word to pronounce. But if I would, could say it three times, I would. Compartmentalization, compartmentalization, compartmentalization. That was pretty good. Don't ask me to do that again. But you know, it is an unbelievably important thing when it comes to this whole idea of eukaryotic cells. Compart, now I, now I have to spell it. All right, illization. What does that mean? It means that the cell is divided into compartments. And that is everything. Think about it. When you want to be organized, what do you do? You compartmentalize things. You put them in drawers. You put them in shelves. You put them in cubbies. Even the clothes we wear have compartments. We have pockets. Compartmentalization is the key to efficiency. So, so think of if you were designing the evolution of an entity, one of the things you would want to do is specialization. Compartmentalization allows specialization. Oh. Okay? Did that rhyme? Well, anyway, that's what it does. And you see, the point is that you can now have membrane-bound compartments that allow you to specialize function. How important is that? That's unbelievable. It's like the mirror of society. You know, we have factories and we have power plants and we have grocery stores. Our society is compartmentalized. Now, I know this isn't a course in sociology, but think about that. And it's the same thing in your cell. We have a specialization of function based in compartments. So I hope I've made my point about that. It's very, very important. The other thing is, all eukaryotic cells have this compartmentalization, as we'll see when we compare plants and animals in just a second and see some of those, a, a quick look at some of those compartments. But before we look at all those compartments, because that's a unit unto itself, I want to talk to you about why we don't have giant amoebas and what that has to do with compartments. All right. You see, we've already, I'm talking about something called a cell membrane or a plasma membrane. And we're gonna see that in a lot more detail later on. But all cells have, cell, have membranes and have membrane-bound organelles. And the plasma membrane is what is referred to as the outside of the cell. Plasma membrane, let's take a look at an animal cell. And you can see that this plant cell, which is not my animal cell, it snuck in there. You know, you can't trust plants. All right, well, there's the plasma membrane, okay? And you can see that this plasma membrane has, uh, it literally surrounds the, the animal cell. Now, before we move to the plant cell, I want you to look at all of the organelles, the parts of this cell. And indeed, they look like they're bound with membranes too. Compartmentalization all over the place, all right? Just to make sure you understand this, plant cells have cell membranes too. Drives me crazy when I hear people say, plant cells don't have cell membranes, they have a cell wall. Well, yeah, plants do have a cell wall, but below that wall, they have a membrane. You see? So they have a plasma membrane around their outside too. Why do plants and animals have to have a plasma membrane? Well, that brings us to the function of a plasma membrane. It's, it is the thing that surrounds the cell and therefore puts that cell in contact with its environment. All materials that enter a cell must come in through the plasma membrane, and everything that leaves the cell, such as wastes and products, must leave through the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is the equivalent of your mouth, your digestive system. It is literally the cells and your lungs. In fact, it's the way we bring everything into the cell and get it out. So what does this have to have about giant amoebas? You know, one of the most frightening stories I ever read was written, it was a short story written by Stephen King and it was called The Raft. Did you ever read that one? I could see you going like this right now, those of you who read The Raft, because it was creepy. You know, these guys are out on this, this, this lake in the autumn somewhere up in Maine, and they're on this raft in the middle of a lake, like so many, you know, experiences we've had. And it's deserted, and it's beautiful, and it's autumn, and they're up there. I think they skip school or something. You had to have a little bit of a sub-theme to it. And, and they're on the raft, and they notice this giant blob in the water, like an oil slick 
ah, but in my mind, it's a giant amoeba, which tells me that this is fiction because you can't have giant amoebas, but hang on, just to finish the story. Well, the, the end of the story is it eats them all. And, and it's, it's a creepy story because, you know, they jump in and they get ingested by this thing and they, ah, they scream, they melt. Eventually, the thing starts working its way up through the cracks in the raft because, you know, they couldn't lay down because they'd fall asleep and the thing would, like, engulf them around. It was creepy. Maybe if you've ever done studying biology, you can read that story. But, but here's the thing. Why don't giant amoebas exist? Why don't I have to worry about that thing in the lake? And it has to do with cell membranes, plasma membranes, and surface area. Okay, remember, here's the thing I want to show you, right? That is a cell. The way things get into this cell is through the membrane. And the way things get out of the cell is, you guessed it, through the membrane. So the membrane and the surface area of that membrane becomes a crucial thing. Now, I want to do some math. I like math, and we're going to show you why it doesn't work. And here's what we're going to do. Why this whole membrane thing, giant amoebas, won't work. We're going to, we're going to take a look, and I'm going to draw a cell. We'll make it, this is the only three-dimensional object I'm capable of drawing, a cube. There you go. Okay, so we have a cubic cell, all right? And we're going to make this cell one by one by one. One wolf unit by one wolf unit by one wolf unit. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at this thing. Now, you might know how we do surface area, the area, how we do volume, and I'm going to do a ratio. Okay? Now, to do the surface area, we have to find out the area of each of the faces, the six faces of this cube, right? One, two, it's got six faces, a top, a bottom, and four sides. All right, well, one by one by one, I picked that because it's easy. One times one is one. Ah, so each of these has a surface area of one, right, length times width, and there's six of them, so the surface area is six. Okay? Right? Because face one has an area of one, the force, you know, the top and bottom an area of one, so the total surface area is six. Okay? All right. Its volume, on the other hand, is one times one times one. Its volume is one. So the ratio of surface area to volume is 6 to 1. And that's a happy cube. Okay? But let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to change it. I'm going to make it grow. It's starting to become a giant amoeba. Okay, a giant cube. And now we're going to make it 2 by 2 by 2. We're doubling it because 2s are easy to work with. Now let's take a look at this. What's its surface area? Well, each face, 2 times 2, 4, and 4 times 6 faces, 24. Its surface area is 24. What's its volume? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Ah, 24 to 8, 3 to 1. Let's try one more. Let's go 3 by 3 by 3. Well, if it goes 3 by 3 by 3, we're going to do the same thing. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, times 6, 54, so we have a surface area of 54. Its volume is 3 times 3 is 9 to 27, you see, 2 to 1. As this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it proportionately has less surface to take food in. It's like me making you 1,000 pounds and keeping your, making your mouth smaller and smaller. You can't get enough food in there to feed that giant body. You see? And so it all comes down to surface area versus volume. Cells, you know, this whole idea of surface area, unbelievably important. And so we come to this concept of what is the cell? What are the structures of a cell? What does a eukaryotic cell do? What are so some of the things it does? And that's where we're going with the rest of the story.